Okay, welcome back everybody. In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, virtual construction of the uh, the automata box using Inventor. Uh, in the last uh, video, we were taking a look at just some file naming and file saving and actually creating the IPTs themselves, um, which comes with our PLTW box kit. All right, so what we're going to be taking a look at now is, uh, is how to actually assemble this. All right, so to get started, what we're going to do is jump out here into Inventor, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, we're actually going to kind of um, uh, we're going to uh, flash or uh, fast forward here a little bit. We're going to take a look at the IEM. All right, I'm going to show you a couple problems that might come with the IEM. All right, so I'm in my IAM environment. I'm going to come out here and go to place. Okay, and now I'm going to come out here and I'm going to go to that location that I saved all my stuff. Okay, that folder that I created earlier, and I can see all my IPTs. Okay, I'm going to come out here and just say, hey, I want to bring in my bottom IPT. I'm going to go ahead and open that, drop that in. All right, first part that comes in, we always have to remember to ground it. So let's go ahead and ground it. All right, it's no longer going to be able to move. Okay, now I'm going to go out here and place in uh, what else I need, which would be our top. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drop that in. And I'm going to come out here and place in my my uh, my back okay and now I'm gonna go out here and place in my side but I'm going to need duplicates of that two sides all right so there you go there's all my MDF pieces that are in my assembly all right so automatically some of you are probably saying to yourself how do you know which one is which all right it gets very very confusing within this IAM environment they're all very close in size and they're all made out of the same stuff all right, and that is exactly the point I'm trying to drive home. So there's one more thing I would recommend you do, and that is, I'm gonna go ahead and just close out of this assembly, is go and open up your IPTs. And then what I tell my students to do is just go out there, start a sketch, okay, on that IPT. Okay, go out there and create a text box. And just go out there and actually name this thing. So I know in this case, this is back. Okay, and I'm gonna make sure that this guy uh, is documented here. Half inch tall, middle center justification, slap that right into the center of that guy and go ahead and finish the sketch. Okay, so now I've labeled that with my back label and that's on my back IPT. Go ahead and do a save. And now what I'm gonna be doing is going out there and opening up all my IPTs and doing the same exact thing. Okay, starting a sketch on that face, I'm gonna come out here and create that text box. Okay, in this case, this is my side IPT. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and make this large enough where I can see it. Oops, I forgot my justification, how about that? There we go, side right smack dab in the middle of it. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Jump back over here, start a 2D sketch on this face. Okay, create my text box, just like so, okay. In this case, this is bottom. Go ahead, bold italicize, send that to a half of an inch. Go with middle center justification on that one as well. Okay, finish the sketch, go ahead and do a save. And then my last IPT here, same thing, start a 2D sketch. Okay, and now I'm gonna go out there and create my text box. Okay, in this case, this is my top IPT. Okay. Make this large enough where I can see it. Go with my middle center justification and say OK and save the IPT. All right, so when we do that, all right, I'm going to go ahead and just close out of my IPTs here. All right, so now I'm going to go out there, open up my assembly. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just uh, drop in my uh, bottom IPT first. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ground. Oops, I did not do that right. Open my assembly. Let's try it again. Sorry, guys. I'm going to go out there and place in my bottom IPT. I'm going to punch that in. I only need one. I'm going to right click and ground it. Okay, now I can go ahead and place in. Uh, what else I need? I need a top, I need a side, I need a back. I'm going to do an open, drop all those in. And here's something pretty cool a lot of people don't know is, is you can also, since we need one more side, is you can just come over here, pick on the side, okay, within the model, drag that over, drop that in. Look at that, it will duplicate it. Okay, so now I have all my parts. My bottom is grounded, super important. Okay, and now I can start putting these into the positions, you know, that I sort of need. 
All right, so my bottom is not in the correct orientation that I am wanting. So what I'm going to do is just go out here. Okay, I'm going to spin this into the orientation that I would like. And now I'm going to right click on my home view and I'm going to set this current view as home. All right, so now every time I hit the home view, it's going to take me back to this particular view I'm looking for. All right, so now I have my bottom here. Okay, I have my side. Okay, I have my side. Okay, and I'm going to just go ahead and leave my top up here. All right, so now we can go ahead and get started. All right, now we can begin assembling this. All right, so when we take a look at this, I'm going to jump back to my handy dandy set of working drawings. Okay, this is going to be the orientation of it. Okay, if I take a look at this, I'm going to be seeing that my sides are actually sandwiched between our top, okay, and our bottom. All right, and this is going to be flush with both this face and this face. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started with that. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, is this just kind of handy? Now remember, what I'm about ready to show you is um, is a great thing to know, and it, it can really help you out. But just remember, okay, you're going to have to really talk with your kids and tell them, hey, that bottom or that first part you bring in has to be grounded. All right, that is absolutely critical. All right, if that is okay and that is totally you know pinned down and grounded, then what I can show you next, okay, won't give you any problems. All right, because it is very helpful. All right, the cool thing is about our side is, is that it is four by four by a quarter. So it does not matter the orientation that I put this, all right, since it's four by four, okay, in both directions. So what I like to tell my students is go out there and nudge this part and get it into, um, you know, a position that's going to be, you know, helping you most when you're going to assemble it. All right, in order to do that, we're going to be coming up here, going to free rotate. Okay, picking on free rotate, now we can come out here and pick on the part that we want to manipulate. All right, we can see that globe comes up. Okay, if I stay within the globe, I can go out here and do an orbit. Okay, if I go to the outside of the globe, it's going to go into a constrained orbit. So the difference between free orbit and constrained orbit is the position that your mouse is within the globe. I can see that my side IPT is in a very good position, okay, to uh, constrain it. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here for the other side. So I'm going to pick on this side, stay within the globe to do a free orbit, just go to the outside to do a constrained orbit, and I can sort of nudge this into the location that's going to work best for the constraints. All right, so there are the sides, okay, that I was talking about earlier, and we said our side was going to be sandwiched between both the bottom, okay, and our top. All right, so in this case, okay, I'm going to be um, using a little orbit here on the fly. If you don't know how to do that, it's just by simply holding down the shift key and holding down the scroll wheel and moving the mouse, okay, to get to the, uh, the place where you want to be. All right, now we're going to go out here and begin constraining this. So coming up here, we're going to be focusing on our constrain feature, okay, and when we pick on constrain, we're going to be seeing the assembly constraints that are available to us through Inventor. Okay, we can see that there are five available to us, and I'll be honest with you, for this uh, problem that you're working on, the only one you really need to be focusing on is the mate type of constraint. When we take a look at the mate type of constraint, all right, the two solutions that we have, okay, is we have the mate option, which is meaning we're going to be going face-to-face, -face, okay, connection. We're going to be sandwiching those together, all right? And then we have the flush option, which is the second one, meaning we're going to be taking two faces and making those coplanar, all right? So in this case, we know that we want this face here, okay, to be making contact with this face here. So if that is the case, we're going to be coming up here, going into our mate type of constraint, of assembly constraint, coming over here to our mate solution, picking the face that we want to be making contact with with this face. Now, when we do that, we're going to be getting the little, um, you know, pebble into the bucket or into the can sound. It's kind of cool. All right. That's going to let you know that that was actually working for us. Okay. Once we do that, do not forget to pick apply. All right. So now what we're looking at is we're looking at a part, okay, that's going to be scooting across the face, the top face of our bottom part. If you don't believe that is actually happening, use the view cube. All right, if we look at it from this angle, we can see that those faces really are connected. All right, the other thing you can do is you can come up here, okay, and we can come out and go into, pause this for a second. All right, I wanna make sure I had that right. So the next thing you can do is if you do want to see um, the degrees of freedom is, is you can come up here, go to the view tab, all right, and once you get to the view tab, you're going to be seeing over here on the left-hand side, okay, this feature here called degrees of freedom. 
if we were to pick on degrees of freedom, okay, it's going to be indicating to us um, these three main axes, which is our X, Y, and Z, all right? And once we start constraining these, all right, we're going to start seeing those go from our green arrows or axes to our red, all right? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get all these just to be locked down with that red. So check this out. All right, we can see it's able to go within uh, two degrees of freedom right now. All right, so check this out. What we also want to do is go out here and constrain this. So in this case, okay, we're going to come out here. All right, go to constrain. We're going to be staying within the mate type, but this time we're going to be going to the flush solution. Why? Because we want this face, okay, to be meeting up with this face and being coplanar. So if we pick on this face and this face, we're going to see that slides over. We can go ahead and apply. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. When we take a look here, we're only going to be seeing that we have one green axis remaining. And look at that. It's indicating that this is able to slide okay, forwards and backwards. All right. So the last thing we're going to have to do is come out here, go to constrain. Okay, we're going to go to mate type, flush solution, pick on this face, and take it to this face, and go ahead and hit apply. When I do this, I just do what we call the uh, the wiggle test. I grab a hold of the part. Okay, if you're seeing the little Ghostbuster sign or the no smoking sign, that is indicating that that is not able to be uh, moved because it is fully constrained to the part in the beginning, which was grounded. If both of these are moving, that means that you never did ground the first part, and that's always the first rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out here and just constrain this second side to where it needs to be using the same process. Go to constrain. It's the mate type. Okay, mate solution, come down to this bottom face, flip this over, and connect it to that top face. Go ahead and hit apply. Okay, it's indicating our degrees of freedom right now. Okay, and we know we need to switch this over to our flush. So I'm going to go this face and this face need to be flush or coplanar. I can go ahead and hit apply. Slide this around and go ahead now and do a flush constraint between that face in that face, go ahead and hit apply. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out my assembly constraints. Go ahead and do the Duzan wiggle test. Nothing is moving. We see the, the Ghostbuster sign. All right, so we know that is fully constrained to our grounded part, which is our bottom. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just shift my back one back here a little bit. Now my top has to come on. My sides are going to be sandwiched between the bottom and the top. Okay, so if that is uh, what we're wanting, we're going to go ahead and flip this over, take a look at the bottom. We want this face to be making contact with this face. So that means it's going to be a mate type of uh, assembly constraint with the mate solution. We're going to come up here, go to constrain, mate type, mate solution, pick this face, flip this over, take a look at the top of our side, and that's going to be mating those together. Don't forget to hit apply. Okay, we're going to go ahead and scoot this face over to be coplanar with this face using the flush solution hit apply. And now I can come out here and say, I would like for this face to be flush with this face. Okay. That's all through the flush solution. Say apply. And now we can cancel out. Okay. Grab a hold of that guy. We see the no ghost or the, uh, the ghostbuster sign. All right. Indicating that this is fully constrained. Okay. To these parts, which are fully constrained to the bottom part, which is grounded. All right. So we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process again for our back IPT. Okay. Uh, now I would like to sort of nudge this into the right direction. Now the tricky thing is with the back IPT is if we took a look at this set of working drawings, is that our back IPT is four and a half by four. So it's a little bit trickier this time because we do have a side that's longer than the other. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and nudge this into the right direction. Go to free rotate, pick on our part. Okay. Use your globe, use the free orbit and the constrained orbit to nudge us into the right direction. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, and a lot of people are taking a look at this and they're like, well, I don't know which side is which. Well, here's a very helpful aid when it comes to Inventor. If you were to come up here and go to inspect, you're going to be seeing that we have the measure option. If we pick on measure, we can come here right to an edge and it's going to indicate to us how far that distance is. So that's four and a half on top. Okay, I can go ahead and hit escape to get out of that. Now I can go to measure this side and we know that that should be four. All right, just to make sure that this part is going to fit in here, because it's going to fit right in here and sandwich between the sides and the top and the bottom, now I need to know which edge this is here on top. So once again, I can go to measure, I can pick that edge, okay, and that is indicating to me that that is five inches. Well, that doesn't make any sense. And I'm looking at this going, wait a minute, there's an arrow here, and it's going all the way to the arrow over here. Oh, that's the wrong place. So watch this, measure this face here, flip it around, and say, what is the distance to that face there? That's the four and a half. 
So we do have this oriented correctly. If not, we'd have to use free rotate, okay, and get this nudge into the right direction. All right, so let's go ahead and let's constrain this guy. Okay, we're going to go out to constrain, mate type, and we're going to go ahead and say, I would like to mate this face here, okay, with this face here. And he goes in there just like so. Now I can jump over and flip this over to our flush solution and say, I'd like for this face to be flush with this face. Go ahead and hit apply. All right, and a lot of students and a lot of people think that this thing is just sort of locked down. All right, it might be a case like this and, you know, people are saying, hey, well, I want to mate, you know, this back face and the bottom of this face together and I just don't have enough room there. Don't worry, just grab a hold of part and you can pull that down. Remember, this is a, uh, a degree of freedom that this still has, so we can scoot things just by grabbing it and moving it. So give yourself enough room. Okay, come up here, go to constraint. Okay, we're going to go ahead and mate this face here, okay, with the bottom of this face here. We'll go ahead and hit apply, cancel out, and we're going to jump over to our home view. And now we're looking at a fully constrained, okay, box. All right, so a lot of people at this point are probably saying, well, how about all the text that we have put on those uh, parts? No problem. Okay, so currently I have only the IAM open, all right? So what I want to do is go out there and talk to the IPT. Here's a great way to do it. If you just double click on the part that you want to talk to, you're going to see that everything else goes transparent. So now we're stepping out of the IAM environment and we're actually talking to the IPT. We can see that is happening over here in the model because this IPT environment is highlighted with white. Everything else is grayed out, which means we are not talking to it. Since we want that top sketch, um, I'm sorry, a top text, okay, on that sketch to disappear, all we have to do is come down here to our sketch, okay, right click on it, and we can say delete, and now we can return back to our assembly. Now we can uh, double click on this side, everything goes transparent, we're talking to the side IPT, right click on the text, delete that, because that's where the text is at, and return. Same thing for the bottom. Double click on the bottom, okay, right click on that sketch, delete it, Okay, and go ahead and return back to the assembly. Flip this over, okay, talk to our back IPT, right click. We can delete that sketch, return back to the assembly, hit our home view, and now we have our MDF box ready to go. So that's a lot of information, a little bit of time. That's why I created this video tutorial, which means you can pause, rewind, fast forward, um, or just see where I made a lot of errors in my language. Um, but anyway, that's a great video tutorial, some helpful tips for creating the box for problem 8.2 automata design challenge.